Hey guys, all right. So, uh, like I said before, um, I was going to make a video of myself eating a stupid amount of something that I shouldn't be eating. Um, before anything, I just want to make make it clear that this isn't meant to be some kind of crazy uh, challenge that you'd see someone like Furious Pete doing or anything like that. I mean, I, I'm not going that crazy. It's more just a uh, kind of a way to surplus myself. So whenever I do something like this, I'm going to eat throughout the day as I normally would and then just tack on something else to the end of it. Um, mostly, probably something, you know, carb heavy, but um, you'll see today it's, it's actually quite protein heavy as well. So... Um, so I was thinking of, of all the different things to do. Oh, I guess I should say, so today, yeah, today I just got back from the gym. Um, I had already eaten a normal amount of food that I would normally eat for the day. It was somewhere around, um, 2,300 calories, kind of like 2,310 or something. Uh, I had some chicken, some brown rice, broccoli, of course, um, sausage and, and, as chicken sausage for lunch, some eggs and bacon uh, for breakfast, and a snack, uh, a couple of wraps uh, that I put. I just put some some cream cheese in. So uh, I'll show you the fitness pail after this is all done to, to give the total amount of stuff. So um, I'm probably gonna ramble here for longer than I wanted to, but anyway, as I was uh, thinking about things to do for this you know, the first video, um, I had a lot of time to think, I just got back from Chicago over the weekend with, um, Ron and his nephew, Ron being Romulux on Talk Beer, and, uh, you know, I went to the store the other day and bought a bunch of stuff, um, one of the things I've always wanted to eat more of is, uh, I don't know how many of you guys know about those Met RX, the big protein bars they do, the ones that are around 400 calories or so. Um, I think by arbitrator's suggestion, I bought the crisp apple pie one time and loved it. And uh, whenever I need a quick meal on the go, that's pretty much what I choose. And I've always chosen that one. Um, and I've never really bought any of the other ones. They're about three bucks. I try not to buy them often, but, uh, you know, so when I do, I, I pick the one I know I like, even though it's the only one I've ever had. So, um... I thought, oh, that would be a cool thing to do, so um, what I have here is one of those crisp apple pies, and you can see it's 400 calories, I think, so, um, you know, looking at this and thinking about that, though, it's like, you know, what, <laughs> what kind of weak shit is that, you know, um, 400 calorie surplus, and really, 100 of it is not even a surplus, and, uh, Oh, that's just a, a sissy challenge anyway. So I decided, okay, well, I'll do two of them. So, um, and that way it'll give me a chance to try another flavor that I normally wouldn't buy. So I'm looking through the flavors here, and there's three other flavors. Uh, peanut butter pretzels, some other kind of peanut butter, and some kind of cookie crunch. And I'm torn. I don't know what to get. So just so happens I look, and there's yellow price tags everywhere, and these bars for at least this day today when I bought them were half off 150 so I thought I would be doing a disservice if I didn't take advantage of that and so I bought one of each and I have so I have four total all different flavors and I will be eating them all and then as I turned around to exit um, out of the corner of my eye I saw the word brownie and I noticed that they had a similar product um, but in brownie form so I bought one of those as well and uh, I'll be eating I'm gonna try to eat all of them so and I will go through the stats along the way and at the end and everything so um, I'm probably not gonna be able to figure out how to put text up on the screen anywhere and if I do I will but um, don't count on it so um, it's gonna be kind of weird me just eating these on camera and talking about random shit um, so if you don't want to watch then don't I really don't care um, but for those of you who do care I'm going to be talking about 
mostly beer stuff, but um, this time I'm going to talk about my trip to Chicago. So I'm going to start off with my favorite, the crisp apple pie, the one I already showed. So you can see the nutrition facts here. I guess the most important part is calories. But like I said, I'll go over all of it again at the end. And I'll briefly talk about these bars for those of you who are interested in these and wondering if you should buy them. Um, like I said, this one is what's well, the only one I've had. Um, it's very good though. It's tasty as far as protein bars go. So it's a pretty big protein bar. Uh, so, anyway, um, about my recent trip to Chicago, it was kind of all sparked by that one post about um, Belgium in a box having a good um, good service for, I forget the username, and I apologize, um, whoever posted that, but, uh, I, I jokingly said, you know, when are you going to split those beers with me, and he said, if you come to Chicago, I gladly will, so, um, in a moment of spontaneity, I sent Ron a text and said, hey, do you want to go to Chicago next weekend, I'm not intending to drink that guy's beer, but just, you know, it was kind of like I wasn't doing anything, and I don't think he was, so, um, he said, yeah, and it was kind of, you know, the rest is history, so, um, he planned everything out for the most part, and he drives a truck around through different parts of Michigan and Ohio and stuff, spends a lot of time in hotels, so he had a bit of time to plan things out, and he's kind of a plan freak anyway, he likes to plan stuff, so, um, he planned everything out as far as, like, the routes we would take. And then um, that same day that I mentioned about seriously seriously coming, Trebes, who I will now refer to by his real name, Ryan, um, sent me a message saying him and his wife were having a barbecue that day and that STX Matt um, would likely be free and coming there too. So um, I told Ron make sure we work that into the plan. Likely I figured that would be the last thing we do. And then, of course, um, one of the things I was most excited about, obviously, aside from just the breweries and meeting a couple of these people, was uh, Burger Antics. So uh, I, I told him that's a 100% definite stop. I, you know, I see all these pictures of these burgers, and uh, we can't go to Chicago and not have one. I don't care if it's out of the way. He completely agreed. So we made sure to work that into our plan as the first stop actually we didn't even get to the hotel we, we went right to burger antics so we left um you know beer in hand and we didn't uh well i didn't eat anything that morning because i knew i'd be stuff in my face at burger antics and uh we got there and it was relatively you know it wasn't packed or anything there was a couple of people already there but um I actually ended up getting a chicken burger instead of a real burger, a beef burger. So I got a chicken patty. Um, not for any kind of health healthy reason or anything. I just was in the mood for chicken, actually. And I think the, bur the burger I got was called Hotter Than Hell. So it was a chicken patty, avocado, smoked gouda, and jalapenos on it with the... the uh, Spicy mayonnaise on a pretzel bun, of course. And then I got the additional grilled, um, let me move this caramel, grilled habaneros on it too because I, you know, I wanted to feel the burn. And then I know everybody raves about his homemade ketchup, and I should have, I should have asked for a freaking sample anyway, but, um, I saw that they had coleslaw, and I assumed that that was probably house-made as well. And I love coleslaw. And coleslaw can go either one or two ways for me. I hate super thick and, like, creamy, mayonnaise-y coleslaw. Um, I think it's unnecessary, and I think it's, you know, I don't, I don't want to eat a bowl of mayonnaise with some lettuce in it. So, luckily, his coleslaw is awesome. Um, it's, it seems a more a thinner, more vinegar based sauce which I love and it was it was excellent and there wasn't too much of it it was you know you got to actually taste the lettuce um it was really awesome and I actually I ate the bowl of coleslaw before I even touched the burger so um the burger and I'm gonna call it a burger even though it doesn't have beef on it so whatever 
it was probably one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. Um, I'm not just saying that because I know he's going to see this, but it really was. And uh, you, you really think about it, and it's hard to get stuff like that around where I'm from, you know, like crazy burgers, you know. I'm not including nasty shit like Red Robin, so something like that where everything is, you know, made in-house and everything is 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 crafted you know by hand it's it's you can tell and there's there's a difference and I mean every part of that burger shine through the chicken you know it's hard to screw up chicken I guess but uh, it certainly wasn't overcooked which is really the only thing that matters so it was good the avocado I love avocado on pretty much everything and so it was no different here and I love like the little kind of creaminess that avocado Gave the burger almost like cheese that kind of starts to melt, and then right as it starts to thicken up again, he's got that. And um, so that was an excellent touch. The jalapenos, great. I love jalapenos, of course. And they add a tiny bit of sweetness, but a nice pepper flavor. The habaneros, hot as fuck. I mean, by a couple bites in, it was it was burning, and by the end, it was quite hot. Um, nothing unmanageable, obviously, but you could definitely definitely feel them by the end of it. And uh, the the uh, kicker for me of the whole thing was the smoked gouda. That sent the sandwich above and beyond. I mean, every every bite had that little bit of smokiness and that creaminess from the cheese. It was fucking awesome, man. Every bite, it was like, man, that gouda just makes the sandwich, brings it to a whole new level. And then his mayonnaise, the homemade mayonnaise, I'm not exactly sure what's in it. And, uh, you know, it looked kind of reddish. I'm sure there's some kind of spicy stuff in it, but it was fantastic as well. Then, after every bite I took, I noticed, oh wow, there's this kind of lingering, you know, buttery, salty flavor. What's that? It's from the pretzel bun, which, perfect. I mean, perfect. This burger wouldn't have been the same on a regular bun, the pretzel bun. Probably number two behind the Gouda is the most important element of the sandwich, but... All in all, just a, a delicious meal, one that I'll remember, and one that was, you know, great. I'm, I'm glad we made the stop there. And then, I couldn't say no to the maple bacon donut. And so, you know, I don't know why I expected anything less, but I guess I didn't expect them to have, like, the donut being made in like, to order. And I think it was, I assume it was, because it came out hot and... It looked like it had just been made, which is awesome, and it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And I didn't know if it was going to be like one down. I didn't know if it was going to be yeast raised or like the thick, dense cake, and it was a thick, dense cake, and it was a good choice. And it sat in my stomach for a while like a lead balloon, but it was worth it. Um, I know I said that that was one of the best sandwiches I had. This is one of the best desserts I've had. And it was, uh, you know, all the guys at the table were just raving about how excellent it was. We each got one, of course. So, uh, give me one sec. So to take a break from my story, I'll go back to the next bar, the Super Cookie Crunch. And this one is 410 calories, as you can see there. So, um, that, that's just a very memorable, memorable trip. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't be happier with the way things went there, you know, and it was delicious meal, delicious food. So please, don't change a thing. Keep doing what you're doing. It's excellent. You can't get food like that around here. You can get good food in Detroit, but nothing like that. Okay? And every time I go to Chicago from now on, I will make a point to stop there. So you have a customer for life in Detroit. That doesn't do you much good. Uh, long term, but whatever. So, anyway, after that, um, oh, you know, I already fucked up, but I'm not restarting this video. Uh, we actually went to Benny's before we went to Burger Antics because we're all idiots and we forgot that the time zone switches back an hour. So, you know, as we were driving and I looked at the time, eventually I was like, wow, we're making really good time. Um, we're going to be there like an hour before I thought we would. Okay, well, that's why, because the fucking time switched over, and nobody told me, 
and my phone kind of just did it by itself and so um they were i you know i didn't know what time the burger place opened but we ended up stopping at benny's first which was nice i mean it wasn't um you know it wasn't like extraordinary but it was just nice to see shelves full of things i don't see here so um got some surly cans too i didn't realize surly distributed outside of minnesota but it was that was nice so uh anyway after that we went to the Burger Antics, and then after that, I went back to the hotel, uh, had a bitter brewer from Surly, and then headed to our first stop at Revolution. So, before I get into that, um, Super Cookie Crunch, really good. I'm, I'm more of a fruity sweet kind of guy than a chocolatey sweet kind of guy. So I think I still like the apple pie better than this one, but this is really good for you Oreo cookie lovers. You would enjoy this. So, um, anyway, we went to the Revolution Brew Pub, not the brewery. So the one on McKin uh, was it McK no Milwaukee Street, not the one on Kedzie Street. Well, until later I found out that Kedzie Street one is the one you want to go to. But either way. Nice place. It's kind of loud. Kind of reminded me of like a TGI Fridays or something in terms of the camaraderie. But we were able to get a seat at the bar, and even though they were busy, you know, the bartender was quick with the orders. I ended up getting a um, Citra Hero and Double Fist first. Citra Hero was really good. Um, you know, it's hard to screw up a Citra IPA, I guess, but uh, it was a good one. Double Fist was good too. A little sweeter than I prefer. You know, I know some people are into that, but I'm not a huge fan of the darker caramel Munich malt. Um, it was good, but I probably wouldn't get it again. And then, uh, for some reason, having the Bitter Brewer earlier and then those two lighter beers, and I was just, I was really in the mood for like a stout or a porter, or something dark, something rich. And much to my chagrin, they did not have a single stout or porter on tap. They had a Schwarz beer, but I knew that wouldn't have the body I was looking for, so I didn't get it. And um, I wasn't expecting them to have, like, you know, very mad cow or something like that, but even, like, Eugene, I would have gotten that, but nothing. So I ended up getting a uh, filibuster, which was a double... Double wheat IPA or no double wheat ale aged in barrels, bourbon barrels. Uh, I forget which ones exactly, but um, I didn't know how that would taste. Immediately when I heard barrel aged wheat ale, I thought of Uberon from Bell's, which isn't that great. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not very good either. But this was actually more of almost like a lighter old ale barrel aged. Um, there really wasn't much wheat ale about it. You know, a lot of barrel character vanilla syrupy but not as boozy or heavy as something like bourbon barrel 4d or you know chukaba so it was it was actually really good uh probably the best beer i had at revolution that day and then i also got their have a have mm, i forget the name el hopvin loco maybe um good but um not great a little thin for a half and uh Little, little too citrusy. I think that one was actually dry hopped with citrus or orange or something. I could be completely wrong, but uh, it was good. It wasn't great, but uh, all in all, nice trip. Um, you know, had I known, had we known, we would have went to the brewery as well. And after checking their website, they did have Eugene on tap. So, you know, whatever. Uh, next time though, but it's a good stop. Either way. So after that, um, we headed out. And then our next stop was Goose Island Clybourne. Um, and we actually, we didn't run into any, you know, bad traffic the entire time. Maybe a mile and a half before we got off to Revolution, there was some, like, you know, we were going like 25 on the freeway. And it took a couple extra minutes. But once we were off, driving, you know, in the, Smaller streets within the city weren't bad, and we never had to get back on the freeway, so um, we ended up probably being more feeling more rushed than we really had to because we didn't know how the traffic would be. But anyway, 
Busan, Kaibor, and another place that's almost more, um, has more of a restaurant feel than an actual bar or brewery feel. Um, really big place, and lots of beers on tap, but again, it was a little disappointing because there wasn't, they had a lot of beers on tap, but it wasn't a lot of stuff that I was in the mood for. Um, you know, it was like, lots of Belgian pale ales, Belgian IPAs, uh, you know, wild ales, things like that, and it's like, you know, those are good, but I just drove all this way, that's not what I want, and once again, I'm not expecting them to have, like, Bourbon County stuff on tap, but, you know, something a little more adventurous, I guess. Um, I did end up getting their Berliner, because I love Berliner, and it was really good. And I think it's underrated. It's maybe not as puckering or sour as a lot of people like, and I do like stuff like that normally, but it was light, um, not super funky, just a little bit of mustiness, but all in all, it was, it was really quaffable, really good. Um, I think what else I got, I got, uh, whatever they had on cask, I forget what it was, and I'm not going to bother to check my notes now, but I remember it being, okay, pretty, like, really mild, um, I think it may have been a mild ale. I'll have to check. But it was, uh, I know cask is, is typically served a little warmer, but it was borderline room temperature, which I like my cask a little colder than that. But it was nice and soft, really smooth. Um, must have been decent. Not something I'd go out of my way to get again, but, you know, it was, it was all right. And then, um, Ron got, oh, got, ah, shit, I forget the name again, it was, uh, an Imperial Wheat Wine, I think, hmm, I forget the name, of course, I should have been more prepared for this video, but I'm just kind of winging it, two down, anyway, the Wheat Wine, it was more, it reminded me of like a double Hefeweizen, for those of you who have had Wheat Love by Bells, it was like a sweeter, more dark, fruity version of that. But not something I love. It's still kind of phenolic and medicinal. It's okay, but um, again, kind of a letdown. I didn't get any food there. Um, I was saving up. So, you know, it, it, good place, nice place. I'd like to see a little more exciting of a tap list, I guess, but maybe I'm just being a prick. Um, but still a nice place overall. Again, glad it, glad we went there. I, you know, you can't go to Chicago, I guess, and say you didn't go to Goose Island. So, um, take a quick break here to introduce the next bar: Peanut Butter Caramel Crunch. This one is another one that is 410 calories. Okay. So, let me give you a quick little synopsis of this first. So, look, it's got little peanut chunks in it. <coughs> Pretty good. Um, how much reminds me of a, uh, oh man, what's that one candy bar? Kind of like a whatchamacallit, or, it's got that, uh, it's almost like that, that crispy, brittle stuff with the caramel on top, and chocolate and peanuts. It's pretty good. I uh, I think I like this better than the cookie crunch. Just because, um, like I said, I'm more of a... I would tend more towards peanuts and that crisp and caramel than, than straight chocolate. But they've all been pretty good so far as far as protein bars are concerned. So. Anyway, wow. 24 minutes. You guys are going to hate me. So the next stop was Half Acre, and uh, I'm glad we stopped there. I wasn't expecting much from this place. I haven't had that many beers from them, but it ended up being the best stop of all, in my opinion, besides Burger Inch, of course. But uh, small place. Uh, we didn't actually end up getting a seat. We just stood up by a shelf to set our beer on, but that's fine. They, I know they specialize in more hoppy beers, it seems like. Um, but they actually were the only ones who had a stout, because I forgot to mention, Goose Island, no stout, no porter. So I still was up without my dark beer. 
half acre had an an old reserve 2012 keg of big hugs which was awesome um so and, and the fact that i was yearning for a stout all day um, made it even better i'm sure so uh, very glad to finally have that um tasty and we got a space ipa after and so that was probably beer of the day for me i mean that was that was delicious either that or big hugs those are probably the two best of the day and uh, really cool place, like I said, small. Um, Ryan told me they were expanding apparently, so it'll be cool to see them get a bigger place. Um, they were also the only place that had um, glassware that I really wanted. I was going to buy something at Goose Island, but I restrained myself. But I loved the half acre tulip, just the tulip that says half acre and orange on it, the ones that they serve the beer in. So, as we're leaving after our two beers there, I walk over to the store, the store is closed. But they tell me um, that you can buy glasses inside of the, the, the brewery or the tap room. So I go in, I tell the guy at the bar I want two of the taster glasses and one of the tulips. And he says they're out of the tulips. I'm like, well, what do you mean? They're all over. And he's like, we can't sell you the ones that we serve the beer in. And so after, I don't know, five, six minutes of trying to convince him telling him I was from Michigan and came all this way for a, for a tulip, he still wouldn't sell me one. So, um, any of you Chicago guys, he did tell me that they'd be back in stock soon. That's all he said. I don't know if that's BS or not, but any of you Chicago guys, if you go to Half Acre and they have the tulip, get me one. I'll trade you. I'll, you know, send you the money and shipping label and extra money for your trouble. You know, trade beer or other glass, whatever you want. I just, I want that tulip. And they don't have it in their online store, which is so stupid. But, you know, that was probably the most disappointing part of the day. I finally found one glass, you know, that I really want. And if I can kind of get it. So, anybody, if you can get it, I'll hook you up. So, um, but no, great visit overall. Uh, I'd like to see them expand, you know, Daisy Cutter. I think before this, Daisy Cutter and uh, Beer Hates Astronauts, what is it called? Are the only two beers I've had from them, and they've both been awesome. I love both of them, so um, definitely need to try more stuff from them, that's for sure. So, I'm spilling this all over myself. So, after this, we decided it was finally time to go to Trebe's house. I'll call him Trebe's, Ryan's house. Sound like a fucking dork. And, uh,. So we stopped back by the hotel, got our beers, headed over. Um, we're greeted by somebody, don't know who. I don't think it was Ryan. I'm trying to think, actually. I don't think it was Ryan who answered the door. May have been. Anyway, when I first saw Ryan, I could clearly tell he was um, borderline shit-faced. So, um, and rightfully so, I mean, celebrating having a family barbecue. Go for it, man, you know, go all out, fuck it, enjoy your life. So, um, it's good to see him and Matt there, the only two people I recognized. And, uh, so, so Ron and I and his, his nephew stood by the sink while they played Cards Against Humanity and just laughed at them all, because it was hilarious, because everybody, most of, most of them were drunk, um, but Ryan was by far the worst, and that was probably the best part about it. Um, but we still were able to split some good beers, so... I bought a uh, Kuhn and Sosa stout for him that he didn't check in. So, thanks for that. He's played a Phantom with me. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of it and embarrass myself. But it's the one that Danny did for the World Cup. Um, You know, with the, the new ghost on the label and the Belgian flag and whatever. Awesome. It smelled like a funky old jockstrap and I loved it. Super funky. Exactly what you'd expect. A little bit of that strawberry fruitiness. Real dry. On point. It's really on point. Um, uh, we, we had some other beers there too. I, for, I forget everything. Uh, some Burnbrill played the fifth. He, he pulled out a Coon and Mead. Manhattan Project, which I'm not a fan of, but that was probably the best bottle of it I've had. Um, Burnbrill played the fifth. Amazing as always. So it was a good time all in all. Um, there wasn't much food there. You know, because it was, you know, later in the day, we had we had taken a little longer than we thought. So we got there, and, and 
there was a big tray of Muddy Buddies, or Puppy Chow, or whatever you want to call it, and I didn't want to just walk over and take a handful of them, because there was somebody sitting in front of it, I think it was his wife, and I didn't want to be like, who the fuck's this guy, just put his paws over my Muddy Buddies, so, uh, I did not go for the, for the Muddy Buddies, it was very tempting though, but there was a veggie tray off, kind of in the, the periphery, where I could have... Snuck some food unnoticed, so I, I went over there and had some snap peas and broccoli. Dipped them in ranch. And I think there was guacamole, too. I remember eating guacamole. But, uh, so we, 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 we watched them drunkenly play a board game, and it was it was entertaining. Uh, talked with Matt a little bit, which was, which was nice to finally meet those guys. One day we'll have to have an actual beer tasting. Um, maybe we can do it after a nice lift session. Um... But, once again, great to finally meet you guys. And then I, I did a little in-person trade with Treves, which was nice. Threw in an extra supplication. I'm not going to complain about that. Thanks, man. So, after that, of course, we were still hungry. Right by the hotel was a Hardee's. Which used to be in Michigan, but it's not anymore. At least not anywhere close to me. So we went there, and uh, Ron and his nephew were all about the Frisco burger, which looked good. But, I don't know. Three down. It didn't look amazing. It looked okay, but, you know, it wasn't like, man, I need to have that. So I just went with chicken fingers. It's been so long since I had fried chicken. I mean, it's been really fucking long, so... Um, got the chicken fingers, fries, they were good, I mean, there's nothing special, now that I think about it, I probably should have gotten something more unique, but, I was a little buzzed and wanted some fucking fried chicken, so, I went for it, um, I almost thought about getting an Oreo cake there too, but I didn't, so, uh, one sec, so, bar number four, the last bar is peanut butter, Crunch, or no, peanut butter pretzel, I'm sorry. I'll try to speed these up a little bit. Another 410 calorie there. So, anyway, um, get back to the hotel room, and we're all feeling pretty pretty good right about now. So everybody heads off to their own room, and, you know, goes to bed. So, of course, me, I brush my teeth, go to bed, pass out almost immediately. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. Number two. This is number two right here. This is the second best for sure. This is the peanut butter pretzel. It's like a, it's like a take five without the chocolate, which may upset some people, but it makes the pretzel and the peanut butter and whatever else shit is in the middle there stand out more, and I like it. Number two. So... I ended up waking up in the middle of the night, somewhere around 2.30, and my TV was on. I don't remember turning it on. Maybe I did. But it was on. I don't remember what was on, but it was on. And I remember having a really, really dry mouth and being really hungry. And so I grabbed my wallet and I went down to the vending machine. It was the most piss-poor vending machine I've ever seen. I mean, half of the slots were empty. One of them, they had a Snickers bar, which was what I really wanted. But it was, like, one rotation back in the little circular thing. So, I knew that if I were to buy it, the first one wouldn't give me anything. So, I sadly could not get that. Um, then, I saw Chili Cheese Fritos, which I love and haven't had in a while. So, I thought, oh, I'll get those. I, I honestly don't know what happened. But when I went to press the button, the little the little spiral for uh, trail mix started turning. Which, I mean, trail mix is alright, but I was kind of pissed. I wanted the chili cheese Fritos. So, put in another dollar and got the Fritos also. Making sure I pressed the right goddamn buttons this time. Then, I saw that they had animal crackers on the top shelf, which I also love. And I thought, well, those will be good for tomorrow. Maybe like a drive home or something. 
So I bought those, and those I only had three dollars in my wallet. So that's what I got. Um, to make a long story short, I went back to my room and ate all three of them back to back while standing on the side of my bed, watching whatever was on TV. And then I went right back to bed and woke up again at nine, just in time for breakfast. When I woke up at you know two thirty in the morning, I had a pretty bad headache. But then when I woke up again at nine, I felt all right. Um, my mouth was still really dry and tasted like shit, but my headache was gone, which was really all I cared about. Went down, had some breakfast at the bar, eggs, sausage, and uh, you know, feeling better. So, uh, so we left. Um, shortly after that, I checked out. Uh, we were going to stop by Three Floyds on the way back, but we actually left a little too early and didn't run into any traffic again. And so by the time we were passing the exit for Three Floyds, there was like an hour or more before they opened, so we decided not to wait. And then we just were uh, going to take 94 East all the way home and decided instead we'd hit Bells since that was only, you know, 10-15 minutes off the freeway. Um... But somewhere along the way, um, maybe 20 miles outside of Bells, we came to a dead stop on 94 East. Dead stop. Completely stopped. Car in park. People were getting out of their cars to look ahead and see. And there were cars as far as the eye could see. And so uh, we hung out there in the, you know, in the middle of the road for... Um, it seemed like fucking ages, but it was probably only like 45 minutes. And um, eventually started moving again slowly. And, uh, you know, maybe a couple miles up, we passed the scene of the accident. Which they cleared up most of it, obviously, but there was a tow truck taking away a car that looked... It looked just like the freaking frame. I mean, it was it was burnt to a crisp. So, uh, man, I hope whoever was in that car is, is fine, but it didn't look good. So... Um, that's never a good thing to see, obviously, but, you know, I don't know. Doing all the circumstances, I guess, but, uh, anyway, after that traffic was pretty, pretty good, but, you know, it was getting later, and we still had a bunch of shit to do, as far as chores and stuff when we got home, so, we ended up skipping bells, not stopping by, and, uh, just went home. So, um, I took today off of work. Not not necessarily expecting to get home late, you know, yesterday. I just, I hate that feeling of vacation ending and having to go back to work the next day. So, I took today off, at least to look forward to another day off. Um, so yeah, all in all, it was a great trip. Um, wish I could have stayed for longer, but you know, it's kind of a whimsical thing to begin with. And I'm really, you know... Glad I got a chance to finally meet some of you guys. Um, by some of you guys, I mean Ryan and Matt, of course. And uh, super glad I got a chance to eat one of those delicious burgers and an amazing donut. I'll never forget it. I mean, that was probably the highlight of the trip. One of them, for sure. So, uh, cheers to that, man. Alright, that is four bars done. All of the bars. And last but not least, the brownie. And this one is a little lighter than the rest, as you can see. Calories, only 390. So 390 only. So this is the light version. Um, starting to feel a little stuff now. <sighs> but, uh, gotta push through. Um, my Chicago trip is over, so I don't know what else to talk about now. Uh, I didn't have as crazy of a beer haul as I expected, but I'm okay with that. I spent enough money elsewhere. But I did find a lot of Maine beers, which I love. I love Maine, um, pretty much everything they do. I mean, I had a bad Maine beer, so stocked up on some of that. Um couple McKellar beers which are always risky and I continue to buy them I don't know why but I do and uh oh Surly like I said I got some Surly beers 
So, um, I got a lot of beer to, to keep me busy here with for a while, including what I traded for, for Ryan with, so, um, I'd like to go back soon. It really wasn't that bad of a drive, I mean, it's something that I'd definitely be willing to do again over a long weekend, and maybe next time stay, you know, two days, um, you know, get a get a group together and actually plan out a, some kind of tasting or something. But, uh, I'll be honest, this brownie isn't very good. And maybe it's just because I'm fucking sick of this protein shit by now, but, um, kind of tastes like shit. I mean, it's not, it's not very moist. It's very dense. I mean, not in, like, the rich chocolatey way. But it is rich and chocolatey, which I'm not a huge fan of. And I don't, now that I think about it, I don't know why I got so excited when I saw the word brownie, because I don't even really like brownies that much. But, uh, yeah. Not recommended. I mean, if you're a brownie lover, you might be able to choke this down, but stick with one of those bars. I mean, crisp apple is still my number one. I love apple pie. If you love apple pie, you'll love it, too. Uh, then you peanut butter pretzel. That'd be number two for sure. Then the peanut butter caramel crunch. And then the, uh, the super cookie crunch. Which is like a really big fucking Oreo. Um, so yeah. All of them are pretty good though. The bars. This not, yeah. Don't do it. So, um, for you guys who need a quick meal on the go. Don't fear, you know, pick one up. Um, they're relatively nutritious. If you eat one of them, you know, if you, if you eat five of them back to back, I'm not sure they will have the same effect. Uh, what scares me the most about this is the high amount of protein. These don't have a lot of fiber. I'm an idiot and didn't eat a lot of fiber this morning. And so, I'll probably take a couple of magnesium pills tonight. Um, otherwise I might be shitting out Jiffy Peanut Butter. And that's never any fun. So, we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you guys will hear about it. So, yeah, um, almost done here. Um, the final count, in case you guys were paying attention, and if I figure it out, like I said, I'll put it up on here. But I wouldn't count on it to figure it out, so I wrote it down. So, for all of these, these four bars and the brownie... 2,020 calories, 61 grams of fat, 219 grams of carbs, and 154 grams of protein. Now, like I said, that's on top of everything I already ate for the day. So I logged everything already, including the rest of the day's food as well as these items. And so, you can see here, total calorie count for the day. 4380. I don't know if this is going to be clear enough to read. There it is. 4380. So, I have this. You'll see here I have work food. I just, that's a group I use for what food I eat at work. I didn't work today, but I just put some shit under there anyway. Um, so, the actual total tally here uh, 116 grams of fat for the day, 400. At 476 grams of carbs, and there's that's what scares me right there is the 387 grams of protein with 62 grams of fiber. I guess I got more fiber than I realized, but uh, I don't think anybody needs that much protein. I don't think anybody needs this many calories, really. So, um, in the future, like I said, this isn't any type of thing for me to do, uh, well. I'm not trying to be Curious Pete or Kobayashi and eat a, like just an insane amount of shit. But just trying to eat a surplus. But one day a week, I'm making it a big surplus of something that people shouldn't be eating. Like five of these fucking bars. So, in the future, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if a lot of the items will be quite so large. As in... 2,000 calories, but I wanted to make the first one a good one. Um, also, today is a 
special day for me. Not a good day or not a day I celebrate, but uh, for those of you who have seen my tattoo, it's a memorandum to my father. And today, three years ago, is the day he passed away. So, like I said, it's not a day I celebrate, um, but it's a, a date that sticks in my mind. And you know, every time I see July 7th, I always, uh, you know, remember that. And so I thought, in honor of him and you guys and the great sale at Meyer, I would do a 2,000 calorie surplus today and not let anybody down. So that was the last bite of the brownie. 200 calories in about 45 minutes. Um, 43, almost 4,400 for the day. This went on way longer than I thought. It really did. And so if you're fucking still here to the bitter end, then God bless you. Because I wouldn't be. Um, but if you want me to do more, I will. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll find other shit to talk about. I'll try to make it quicker. I don't think anyone will take this long. Like I said, you know, it'll generally be stuff more around maybe 12, 1400 calories or definitely over a thousand, but, you know, maybe more enjoyable things like a tub of ice cream or a box of crackers or something. Because this, it, like I said, these bars are good, but protein bars after a while, man, they start to taste like, I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about, so. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see. I will track my weight as I always do. Um, I don't expect it to change because I believe it or not, I've eaten more than this. Um, you know, I don't do this every day, obviously, or else I would be humongous. But uh, it's just a way to show people that you can pig out every now and then and not not be worried about it. Um, you know, unless you're trying to be a professional bodybuilder, then then don't do this. But uh, hey, I just ate 2,000 calories worth of shit, and it could be 2,000 calories worth of anything, beer, would have been a lot better, you know, candy, whatever, but, uh, hope you enjoyed, and, uh, sorry for rambling so long, but, uh, that is what it is, if you don't like it, go fuck yourself, just kidding, so, uh, alright, hopefully see you next week, uh, if you have any suggestions, suggestions as to things you want to see me eat, um, let me know. Once again, you know, it won't be something outrageous, but if it's something I think I could do and it's somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 surplus, then maybe I'll consider it. So, all right, guys. Cheers.